Many of you watching this video are going through an adjustment following surgery. Learning a different way of breathing through a shoddy tracheostomy tube put in place by your physician. Since each one of us is different, you'll want to talk with your physician or home health care provider about your specific needs. This tape is meant as a guide to the care of your tracheostomy tube at home. Your doctor has specified a shyly tracheostomy tube for you, and we want you to feel comfortable in using and caring for it. In this tape, we'll familiarize you with shyly tracheostomy tube products and many of the procedures you'll be learning with the help of your home health care provider. Much of what we'll be covering is discussed in this tracheostomy tube adult home care guide. It is designed as a home reference for you. While watching this tape, it will help to follow along in your home care guide. Keep the pen and paper handy, too, and jot down questions you may have for your doctor or home health care provider. A good place to start is the first part of Section 2, where you'll find a review of your recent surgical experience. Your surgeon performed a tracheotomy, making an incision into the trachea to create an artificial airway. A tracheostomy is the surgical opening through which a tube can be passed. A tracheostomy tube permits you to breathe through your surgical airway. Sometimes these terms may seem confusing, so to help you, section two of your guide also includes definition of terms. This section describes many of the medical terms you'll be hearing. Features of the tracheostomy tubes we'll be discussing are also highlighted. I'm sure one of the first things that you've experienced is a different way of breathing with your tube in place. Instead of breathing through your nose and mouth, you may be breathing primarily through your tube. Because your nose acts like a filter and warms and humidifies your air, you may require additional humidification, as determined by your physician. As for talking, when we speak, air passes between our vocal cords. A tracheotomy is performed below your vocal cords. This means that when you are breathing primarily through your tube, little or no air flows past the vocal cords, so speaking will not be possible. Speaking may be possible, however, with certain tracheostomy tube models. When we talk about a tracheostomy tube, we're really talking about a few separate parts. First, there is the main body called the outer cannula. That's the actual tube that's inserted into the trachea to provide a temporary or permanent artificial breathing passage. Most shoddy tracheostomy tubes also include an inner cannula, a removable tube that acts as a passageway for airflow and for the removal of mucus. There are two types of shoddy tracheostomy tubes. The first, the cuffless tube, allows breathing through the tracheostomy as well as through the mouth and nose. The cuffed tube, when inflated with air, acts as a seal against the tracheal wall to eliminate or reduce airflow through the mouth and nose. When the cuff is inflated, breathing is done through the tracheostomy tube. Some types of shyly tracheostomy tubes are fenestrated. That is, there are holes in the curved part of the body of the tube. When the inner cannula is removed from a fenestrated tube, air is permitted to pass up through the vocal cords and exit the mouth and nose. With cuffed tubes, the cuff is deflated to permit additional airflow around the tube. When the cuff is deflated and the inner cannula is removed, a decannulation plug can be attached to the outer cannula of a fenestrated tube. With the plug in place, the airflow is blocked through the tracheostomy tube and breathing is directed through the mouth and nose. This allows speech. Inflating or deflating the cuff is made possible using a lure syringe. The syringe opens a lure valve, which is connected to a pilot balloon. This is a plastic, sac-like component that acts as an indicator for the amount of air pressure within the cuff. Some tracheostomy tubes also feature a pressure relief valve. This valve automatically limits the internal cuff pressure to approximately 25 millimeters of mercury. Identifying the style and designation of each shoddy tracheostomy tube is made easy by color-coded packages, all sterile, as well as by the swivel neck plate on each tube. The swivel plate assists in properly positioning the tube within the trachea. 
With the tracheostomy ties properly attached, this plate also helps secure the tube to the neck. We've mentioned the inner cannula, the tube that acts as a passageway for airflow and secretion removal. There are two styles of the inner cannula, one which can be cleaned and reused, or a disposable inner cannula for single use only. Reusable models are attached to the outer cannula by way of the shyly twist lock connector. This 15 millimeter connector also provides a universal attachment for use with standard respiratory equipment, like ventilators. The second type of inner cannula, the disposable inner cannula, is connected to the outer cannula by the Shiley snap lock connector. It too provides a universal respiratory attachment. We'll be briefly going over tracheostomy care in our next segment, but first, let me point out section three in your guide called warnings, cautions, and notes. During your training, review with your health care provider the areas that apply specifically to your type of tracheostomy tube. Also familiarize yourself with the section called symptoms, probable cause, and probable action. Sounds like legal talk, but it will help you identify some conditions that may arise with your tube and possible actions to take. In case of an emergency, Always contact your physician immediately. And always consult with your physician or home health care provider with any questions or concerns. At this point, you may wish to pause the tape and review the information we've just covered with your home health care provider. The disposable inner cannula with snap lock connector has been designed for the convenience of single use. Known as the DIC, it eliminates the need for the inner cannula cleaning step and reduces the amount of cleaning supplies required. The snap lock on the DIC allows for quick, easy removal of the inner cannula. The DIC is changed and discarded as part of your routine tracheostomy care. The first step in all procedures is to thoroughly wash your hands with soap and water. In some cases, in the home, Protective gloves are recommended. Check with your home health care provider for instructions. Position yourself in front of a mirror and stabilize the neck plate with one hand. Grasp the snap lock connector with the opposite hand and squeeze both flanges. Gently pull the inner cannula out of the outer cannula in a downward motion. Gently squeeze the snap lock connector of your new DIC and insert the inner cannula into the outer cannula. Release the snap lock connector when it's secured to both sides of the connector rim of the outer cannula. This shyly inner cannula with a twist lock connector has been designed to be cleaned and reused. Before you begin cleaning the inner cannula, assemble your equipment. Wash your hands thoroughly with soap and water. Position yourself in front of a mirror and stabilize the neck plate with one hand. Grasp the twist lock inner cannula connector with the other hand. Using a counterclockwise motion, carefully unlock the inner cannula. Gently pull the inner cannula in a downward motion and remove from the outer cannula. If you are unable to remove your inner cannula, contact your physician or home health care provider immediately. If you require a temporary connection to respiratory equipment during the cleaning procedure, Use the spare inner cannula that may be ordered separately. Place the soiled inner cannula in a basin filled with sterile saline or distilled water. Gently remove collected secretions with a pipe cleaner or a brush that is smaller than the inner diameter of the inner cannula. A solution of one part hydrogen peroxide and one part distilled water can be poured through the inner cannula to remove dried or encrusted secretions. Rinse the inner cannula thoroughly to remove all hydrogen peroxide before use. Remove excess moisture by shaking or using a lint-free cloth, such as a sterile 4x4 gauze. You're now ready to reinsert the matched twist lock inner cannula. To do this, stabilize the neck plate with one hand. Gently insert the twist lock inner cannula with the other hand. Using a clockwise motion, turn the connector on the inner cannula to securely lock it within the outer cannula. 
verify that the twist lock connector engages securely. Proper inner cannula care starts with understanding which type of inner cannula product you are using, either the snap lock disposable inner cannula or the twist lock model, then learning the appropriate home care procedures. You may wish to pause the tape at this point to review these procedures and the related portions in section 3 of your guide with the assistance of your home health care provider. Tracheostomy ties are changed routinely during daily tracheostomy procedures or when they become soiled. The following procedure, which is also reviewed in section 5 of your guide, is to be used only if your physician or home health care provider instructs you to do so. Before beginning to change the ties, assemble your equipment. Wash your hands thoroughly with soap and water. Position yourself in front of a mirror and remove the twill ties from their package. Place one end of the tie through one neck plate hole and pull until the tie is three to four inches longer than the other end. You may require assistance from your caregiver. Secure the shorter end of the twill tie into the other neck plate hole. Place one finger between your neck and the ties and place a square knot to secure the connection. Do not secure the twill by tying a bow. Using a blunt nose scissors, carefully cut the excess twill ties allowing one to two inches to remain. Carefully cut and remove the soiled ties. Your physician or home health care provider may have recommended the use of a pre-cut tracheostomy dressing in order to absorb drainage around your tracheostomy incision, also called your stoma. Periodically, whether you use the dressing or not, the area around the stoma should be cleansed with water and patted dry with sterile gauze. If required, you should replace your sterile dressing at this time. You should notify your physician of any sign of infection, such as redness or inflamed skin, at the tracheostomy site. Coughing is one way of clearing your airway when secretions are present, but for some, suctioning the tracheostomy airway is also necessary and may be part of your daily care. Your physician or home health care provider will determine your suctioning needs. The following suctioning procedure is discussed in Section 5 of your guide. Do not attempt to perform suctioning yourself unless you have received proper training and have been instructed to do so by your physician or home health care provider. Assemble your equipment. Wash your hands thoroughly with soap and water. Connect the suction catheter tubing to the suction pump, then glove as instructed by your home health care provider. Keep one hand from touching non-sterile objects. With the other hand, check for correct suction pressure on the suction pump prior to use. Now with your sterile hand, remove the remainder of the catheter from its sterile packaging. Place it in a container of sterile water. Place your finger over the catheter suction port to allow water to flow through the catheter. Position yourself in front of a mirror. Some patients may require supplemental oxygen during the following portion of the suction procedure. Your physician or home health care provider will advise you of your specific needs. Using your sterile hand, insert the suction catheter with your finger off the suction port into your tube. Your home health care provider will instruct you on insertion depth. Place the equipment hand on the catheter suction port to apply suction and slowly withdraw the suction catheter while rolling it between your fingers to aid in the removal of secretions. Caution! The suction procedure should last no longer than a few seconds. Rinse the catheter in the sterile water basin to remove collected secretions. If additional suctioning is necessary, allow adequate time between each catheter insertion for normal breathing or for mechanical ventilatory support. This will aid in the reoxygenation of your body. Some patients may require removal of pooled secretions above the cuff. Your physician or home health care provider 
will instruct you on the proper procedure if necessary. Remember, your physician may or may not have prescribed this procedure for you as part of your daily home care. If suctioning has been prescribed for you, make sure you are properly instructed in the suctioning procedure before attempting it yourself. You may wish to pause the tape and review the previous procedures and corresponding cautions in Section 3 of your guide with your home health care provider. The following procedure on changing the outer cannula of your tracheostomy tube is covered in Section 5 of your guide. Do not change your tracheostomy tube yourself unless you have received proper training and have been instructed to do so by your physician or home health care provider. Before you begin changing the outer cannula, assemble the necessary equipment. Whether you use a cuffed or cuffless tracheostomy tube, Always make sure you have a replacement tube of the same size and style available. This will allow you to make a rapid tube change in the event of an emergency. Wash your hands thoroughly with soap and water. Check the package label for the correct type and size of tube. Remove the tracheostomy tube from its sterile container. Remove the inner cannula and set it aside on your sterile cloth. For cuffed tubes, conduct a leak test of the inflation system before inserting to verify that no leaks are present. To do this, insert a lure syringe in the lure valve and inflate the cuff with the appropriate volume of air. Refer to the instructions that come packaged with your tracheostomy tube for the right amount of air pressure to properly inflate the cuff. Using a basin with sterile saline or distilled water, remove the inner cannula and fully immerse the outer tube and inflation line system. Observe the inflation system for any flow of bubbles while immersed underwater. If no leaks are detected, remove the tube from the basin, shake excess water, and place on a sterile barrier. The next step for either cuffed or cuffless tubes is to attach the tracheostomy ties to the neck plate hole. For cuffed tubes, Insert the lure syringe into the lure valve and slowly deflate the cuff while using your hand to gently move the cuff away from the end of the outer cannula toward the neck plate. Check that all of the air has been removed from the cuff and that it adheres closely to the outer cannula, allowing insertion of the tube into the tracheal stoma. Insert the smooth tip obturator that is packaged with your tube. Lubricate the end of the tube and obturator with a thin film of water or water-soluble lubricant. Your replacement tracheostomy tube is now ready for insertion. To change the outer cannula, position yourself in front of a mirror. Some patients may require suctioning of pooled secretions above the cuff prior to deflating. Contact your physician or home health care provider for specific instructions. Place the lure syringe into the lure valve and be sure to deflate your cuff prior to removing the tube. Carefully cut the tracheostomy ties using a blunt nose scissors. Using your non-dominant hand, grasp the neck plate and remove the entire tube in a straight downward motion. With the prepared replacement tracheostomy tube in your dominant hand, insert the new tube using a gentle forward motion. With the tube held in place, Immediately remove the smooth tip obturator to allow air to flow into the tube. If you are unable to remove the tracheostomy tube, do not force it. Contact your physician or home health care provider immediately. For cuff tubes, insert the lure syringe into the lure valve and inflate the cuff as instructed by your home health care provider. Place one finger between the neck and the tie to make sure that it is not too tight or too loose. Place a square knot to secure the connection. Install the new inner cannula and reconnect to respiratory equipment if required. Verify that a secure connection has been made. Discard the used tracheostomy tube as directed by your home health care provider. In caring for your outer cannula, remember that shyly tracheostomy tubes are designed for single use only and cannot be sterilized by any method. 
Remember, for any questions or concerns, talk to your physician and home health care provider who can help you make a smooth transition to home care. Thank you.